Today's video starts with what I can only describe as a fascinating story. So the story begins thus. About three, four, no, five years ago, I purchased a 3V23. And it is this 3V23 that you can see here. Now, I initially tried repairing said 3V23, so I fitted new belts. I fitted a new belt to uh, the eject... Um, no, I didn't actually, I lie. Uh, I fitted new belts on the underside capstan and the drive belt on the, uh, the load motor. But I didn't fit uh, new belts to the load cradle that I'm trying to remove here. We'll come on to that in a minute, just how fun that particular process is. I also fitted a new idler. And I put it all back together and thought, oh good, it's going to work wonderfully now. And I, I stuck a tape in, uh, which was the Doctor Who tape, which I managed to remove after it's been sat in the machine for about five years. And uh, on playback, all of the sound was very, very warbly. Uh, and eventually the machine would stop playing, actually stopped playing back altogether. So last night I decided to... Um, and last night being the 13th of May of 2019, if you're watching this in the future, I decided to do something about it. What had also happened in the interim period is I'd acquired another two uh, 3V23s. Both those 3V23s were what I sort of refer to as rental brand machines. So one of them was possibly a Baird, I don't know. And the other one was a multi-broadcast branded machine, which actually had uh, a Baird um, model number on the back. So all of the Thorn rentals were usually branded or usually model numbered 8, 9, then followed by a series of numbers that sort of, as far as possible, matched the range of um, machines on the consumer Ferguson market. However, it gets a bit more confusing when you go up to the 8930. So the 8930 was effectively the Ferguson 3V30. But then you had a rental only 8940, which was a Ferguson 3V30, but with linear stereo sound. Then you had the 8941, which was the 3V31 and the 8942, which is the 3V32, which are both of the, uh, the front loaders. The rental brands all seem to have a unique colour scheme as well, so instead of the um, standard light grey and silver on the Ferguson models, you had a finish which was, just looking at one of my rental machines, black, silver, and more black. In fact, the silver, as opposed to sort of a nice gunmetal sort of shade, was actually a vibrant silver colour. I'm actually just craning my head over my shoulder here, looking at a 3V31, and on top of it, an 8941, which is a multi-broadcast machine, funnily enough. So, what I decided to do was I wanted to make one good machine out of two machines. And I thought initially, I know, I'll start with this 3V23 here and have a go at trying to repair it. Thinking that the problem was with the loading mechanism, I reset as far as possible the, uh, the loading cradle and fitted a new belt to the actual loading mechanism itself. However, and even though the video lamp is working perfectly, when you place a cassette in, the cassette does load, but there are no playback functions. So rather than troubleshoot any further, I decided to relegate this machine to uh, a pile of um, I will look at it later, uh, or I may use it for spares pile, and decided to take a look at the multi-broadcast machine that uh, I also had. Now that front panel I was on about earlier, when I did the Nord Mend, um, I don't remember having to remove the entire front panel to get the uh, the tape cradle out. Um, I believe, if I recall correctly, I was able to get the cradle out without having to remove the entire front panel. 
However, it transpires on the Ferguson versions, you need to remove the six screws holding in that front panel, and then you can gently work the cradle out of the machine, which is, I've got to be honest, easier said than done. So, I decided to not really turn back at this point, and after, you know, trying to get it to work, I decided to... Um, you know, move on to the multi-broadcast machine. So the multi-broadcast machine initially seemed to be a lot better and it actually turned out that the multi-broadcast unit was actually in much better mechanical condition. Um, it needed new belts so I fitted the capstan drive belt that I uh, recovered from this 3V23. It's basically a brand new belt, never it'd been on the machine but had never actually seen any service. Uh, the idler, I haven't replaced the idler, but it didn't seem to need replacement, so I've actually got a spare idler, which is quite handy. Uh, the video heads, again, I left those alone, as I was talking about to my 3V35 video. Um, I'm only cleaning those if I absolutely have to. Uh, the video control, or, sorry, audio control heads and the raise heads got the standard amount of cleaning, and the tape path and the actual loading mechanism were lubricated as well. So what I ended up doing was I took the multi-broadcast machine that I had, uh, installed the belts that I'd recovered from the 3V23, and instead of dismantling the load motor, I actually took the load motor out of this 3V23 and uh, transferred it into the new uh, multi-broadcast unit. New is, you know, it's nearly 40 years old, but new to uh, <laughs> new to this video quite shortly. So, replacing the motor, greasing the gears, and then putting it all back together, and then obviously sort of testing the unit to um, make sure that it all worked. Now, the motor itself um, plugs into that board that you can see I've got propped up there. Uh, you have to remove the cable that uh, is a little just sort of two pin cable which is plugged into the board. You have to just um, undo some of the flexible metal retainers that hold the loom in place. Once you've got those out of the way you can carefully remove the cable from the machine. When you are uh, replacing the motor on the new machine, on your uh, uh, machine that you're going to be, or its final destination rather, just be wary of where those cables root and make sure that you root them all back into a similar sort of place. Now here's the multi-broadcast. Now in my view it actually looks a, a little bit more handsome in the rental colours. So the top cover is just uh, the standard sort of gunmetal colour but as you can see as I said earlier the actual fascia is uh, completely different so you've got um, obviously the rental brand logo but the colouring is different as well. Now I put um, the Ferguson fascia actually on top of there so you could actually see uh, the difference. What I ended up doing was uh, I also ended up dumping this uh, top cover which has gone into the uh, with the spares Ferguson and uh, using the um, top cover that was on the Ferguson itself because it was in better condition. So standard vacuum of all of the dust out of the machine and then just a standard removal of the bottom panel, uh, flip up the um, bottom board and replace the, uh, the motor and the capstan drive belts. What I also did on this machine was to remove the, uh, the load cradle and painstakingly, well actually not painstakingly, you just remove the little circlip and get the belt out and replace it that way. I didn't cover that in this particular video, um, partly because I was running out of uh, battery, but I also covered the process in the Nordmend V500 video. Um, as I said in the Nordmend V500 video, these machines are identical except uh, branding and price. And it also seems that the um, the front panels are different as well. The Ferguson front panel is more finicky, whereas the and I'm just craning over my shoulder now. The uh, the Nordmend front panel, just looking at it here, is in my view more elegant and seems to make more sense. You've actually got all of the relevance of the play buttons 
and main deck control buttons exposed, which um, you also have on the JVC and Akai versions of this deck. But on the Ferguson versions, all of those buttons are concealed under the uh, the single large flap. Also, I'm looking at this again, all of the um, bottom panel buttons seem to be slightly recessed on the Nordmen. I think they are on the um, Ferguson as well. And also on the Nordmen, just looking at it here, you've got a, like a, a little slidey cover that goes over the... Um, initially it goes over the tuner controls, but it can also go over the program controls. Usually stays over the channel tune controls so that you don't inadvertently tune in a new channel. All of the input features, headphones, microphone, etc., are completely identical. And obviously, you've got your hidden noise reduction button as well, should you need it. Audio and sound reproduction on the machine. Um, on this multi broadcast was absolutely perfect. On the free V23 that I originally had, there was, as I say, a lot of warbling, and that board that runs across the back of the machine, which is the very complicated audio processing board, apparently can suffer from uh, dodgy capacitors. So in a future project, I may actually take the board out of the spares Ferguson and have a look at uh, which capacitors need replacing so I'm, I might buy uh, something to actually measure the value of the capacitor so I'm not just blanket replacing capacitors for the sake of it. So again with this I did the standard uh, fast forward and full rewind just to make sure that uh, everything was running fine from a take up spool perspective and then it was on to the main event which was actually testing playback the load cradle is another weak spot on these machines and it seems that after a certain age those top rollers that you can see there tend to go a bit shiny and you do need to manipulate it. So interesting thing about this, the fast forward facility um, and also the pause facility seem to be much better than the 3V35 but this is an older machine, more complex, and it's much higher uh, sort of market area. So, but the picture quality and the sound quality are very similar to the Free V35. So, as I say, JVC didn't really sort of skimp on the quality; they just sort of skimped on some of the features and additional processing features. You also had the unique X2 facility as well, unique on the, uh, the 3V23, which was, um, you know, quite an interesting circuit. Anyway, that's it for that video. If you have found that interesting, don't forget to hit that like button, and also consider subscribing for more upcoming fascinating hobbies. Thanks for watching.